Hi. Um, wow, it really is lighting up here. Well, that's nice. um, so I uh, would like to tell you all one of my greatest fears. It is something that I expect most people who have met me would actually be really surprised to learn. In fact, I would say that aside from my husband, I would be surprised if um, nobody that I know or I'm related to actually knows that I have this fear. Um, I am really, really fearful of watching C-SPAN. <laughs> now, it's not C-SPAN C -SPAN specifically. Um, I actually get very, very tense and worried watching any kind of show that has tension or conflict. So, uh, no way can I watch political debate, religious debate, uh, even those courtroom dramas give me an anxiety attack. Um, and, and I'm serious. Um, my poor husband loves, of course, to watch political shows. And I'll, I'll try and watch even the funny ones. You know, Jon Stewart, things I agree with, I still can't watch them. I get, I, I break out in a cold sweat. I, I literally get a knot in my stomach. My hands will get sweaty and shake, and, and I have to leave the room. I am always up on current events, but I have to read it all. I can't watch um, on TV or live in any kind of debate just, just gives me a full-on anxiety attack. This um, is complicated by the fact that I'm very involved in the community, and I'm on a lot of boards and committees. And as we all know, a lot of times, different perspectives come up, and there is conflict on these things. And um, on almost every board and committee I'm on, I'll be the one who's sort of in the middle, trying to bring everybody, find the common ground, find harmony. If uh, tensions start to escalate, I kind of default into this really super perky mode to kind of cheer everybody out of being tense. Um, and, uh, and that's just how I am. And, and so it's very, very unusual, very unusual for me to ever actively seek out uh, an issue that is controversial and sort of put myself in the middle of it. Um, so I surprised myself last fall when I actually did exactly that. Um, most of you are probably aware of the issue that came up uh, with LPS in the fall. Um, my daughter, my kids are here tonight, my daughter is a student at Irving, and uh, there were a couple of teachers at Irving who had some students who were struggling with gender identity, and um, the teachers really felt like they didn't know enough about the issue to really be able to support the kids and asked for some training materials um, so they could really reach out to these kids more. And so some materials were located and shared uh, with all the teaching staff. Um, materials made their way to some parents who um, had some strenuous objections to them. Um, and I kind of didn't tune into a lot of this until uh, it, it escalated up to the national media um, and I think was mis misreported um, as the LPS has a policy that says you cannot, teachers are not allowed to call kids boys or girls, they have to call them purple penguins. Um, from what I understand, the purple penguin piece came, the person who wrote one of the training materials, that was their kid's mascot. Um, like I have a Sheridan shark and an Irving Ardor over there, I guess they had a purple penguin. But um, regardless, um, this issue, I, I'm sure you all saw, there were a lot of uh, strong emotions on either side of the issue. And um, I've always, um, my dad was a teacher, I've always felt that it's really important for teachers to have access to any kind of information they need to help kids uh, be successful. And so um, we heard that there was gonna be a, a big school board meeting where people on both sides of the issue were gonna be going in and testifying. And normally that is the kind of thing that would make me run the other direction. Um, but I felt like it was important to go down there and give them my two cents. Um, and so I uh, got in the car with my husband and my mom, we went down to the meeting, and I got up to speak, uh, said my thing, and, and that part, fine. I don't have a fear of speaking in front of people. I'm okay with that. Um, but the sitting and the listening was very stressful for me. Um, didn't matter if whoever was speaking was in agreement with me or in opposition to me. I, I literally sat there, it was a three hour meeting, I sat there and felt like I was gonna throw up the whole time. Um, I was <laughs> drenched in sweat, my heart was beating really fast, literally my hands were shaking for three hours. <laughs> I was having this full on panic attack. But I felt like it was important that I be there. Um, so we got out of the meeting, and 
out of the car, we're driving home. And um, I thought to myself, oh my God, that's over. It's behind me, I'm done with that, Whew. And so then I did the, th the other thing I always do after um, being on a board or hearing different perspectives, I kind of tried to sift through everything I had heard and think, okay, have I considered all the angles? Do I need to, to broaden a perspective here? And the thing that kind of kept reverberating in my mind was um, the issue to which I had spoken, which was uh, about teachers' training materials. And um, the argument that I heard from several parents saying, um, when we deal with bullying, we shouldn't be talking to teachers and excuse me, training them about um, transgender issues or LGBT issues. We need to just deal with teaching people to be respectful and kind to each other. So I thought about this as we were driving home, because that, that's how I was raised. I mean, in my day, and probably for a lot of you, we didn't, we didn't talk about bullying. We didn't um, role play. We didn't really strategize with bullying. You just were taught you don't do it. It's not nice. You have to be nice to everybody. And as I was thinking about this and thinking, well, you know, do I, do I feel like that, that works as I was a kid? Um, I thought about Kimberly Kirk. Kimberly Kirk was a little girl who uh, lived around the corner from me. She was a couple years older than I was, so we didn't really hang out much. Um, but we went to the same school, we rode the same school bus. And Kimberly was morbidly obese. So as you can imagine, she got picked on a lot. Um, we didn't have recess together, so I can't tell you what happened in the playground. But I very clearly remember one day coming home on the school bus. And uh, Kimberly was sitting across the aisle from me, and behind her was a boy named Ralph who was in my class. And Ralph was saying some very cruel, hurtful things to her, and she was sitting there quietly trying not to cry. And I knew that wasn't okay. I, I knew you're supposed to treat each other with kindness. And so I told him to stop. And he said, well, why should I? And my answer to him was, well, Ralph, Think how you would feel if you looked like that. Think how you would feel if you looked like that. Now I think back as an adult now and as a parent, and I am sure that in its own way, my comment was as hurtful to Kimberly as Ralph's comment. Because without meaning to, I put her as an undesirable object. My intentions were absolutely good. I was trying to be kind. I felt empathy for her. But kindness and empathy only got me halfway there. In order for me to get the rest of the way there, I needed understanding. I needed to understand what Kimberly went through every day when she went to school. I needed to understand what it felt like to be her, to be faced with what she was faced with. And I needed to understand how to support her, what I could do to actually support her. And as I was sitting in my car thinking about Kim, it became very clear to me that I believe the same thing about our LGBT kids and about what teachers should be able to learn about. Because kindness and empathy are so important, but they only get us halfway there. And I knew in that moment that everything that happened at that meeting was not behind me. So I went home. And I made some calls. Called some friends, they called some other friends, and we had a meeting. And a group of us formed an organization. It's called Every Student Counts Lincoln. Uh, we built a web page, built a Facebook page, both of which were tricky. Um, but the hardest thing for me has been that I've been <coughs> attending school board meetings. Because you may not realize this, but the testimony that happened last fall didn't just happen at one meeting. It has continued for every single school board meeting throughout the entire winter and the early spring. There is still testimony going on, still lots of testimony going on. And going to those meetings has not been easy for me. I still go in and feel like I'm gonna throw up the whole time. Sometimes I 
I speak, sometimes I don't. But here's the thing. Last year in Lincoln, 59 kids between the ages of 13 and 19 tried to kill themselves. That's the equivalent of two full classrooms full of children. And some of those kids succeeded. And I don't think that we can look our kids in the eye and say to them, if you are hurting, if you think you want to die, please tell a teacher they can help you. Unless you are struggling with an issue that we are uncomfortable with or we don't agree with. Then you're on your own. I don't think we can tell that to our kids. And if me going every other week to a school board meeting and feeling sick to my stomach can help make sure that our teachers have access to every tool they need to be able to support our kids and help them be safe and successful, then that is something that I'm willing to do.